Welcome back to the Lynn Miller Room on this edition of the Eagle Sports Coaches Show. We'll talk a little volleyball with Jamie Gordon, volleyball coach here at MSU. And coach, uh, three in a row, uh, another tournament title, and uh, played some pretty good competition over the weekend. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was a fun weekend for us. Uh, you know, long weekend, um, but uh, getting a chance to play some some good competition going into to conference play was important for us. And um, you know, overall, I, I was pleased with the three wins. There were some shaky performances within that weekend, um, but overall, uh, definitely pleased with the results. You beat Youngstown State, UNC Wilmington, and UNC Greensboro. Let's start with Friday's match against Youngstown State. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, that was a, a real solid performance for us. Uh, honestly, I think Youngstown State was probably the um, – you know the best competition that we were facing and so to start off the tournament there and and to do it in straight sets we kind of started off a little bit slow to be honest and and gave uh, Youngstown some some opportunities and were able to squeeze out a very close one in the first set um, and then our, our serving got on track and we did a, a nice job of putting some pressure on them um, and, and I think probably the the big key for us in, in that match and then also even the morning match on, on the next day against Wilmington was that our defense was putting balls in system for transition. So we were actually able to run our offense directly off of the defense. And when you can do that, when you can get that type of ball control, um, it, it really opens some point scoring opportunities for you. You know, you mentioned you sweep Youngstown State, you sweep Wilmington, and you go into the championship game of the Greensboro tournament against the host school, which is probably kind of a little more of a challenge than, uh, than if you were playing somebody else then it becomes a neutral site game yeah and and uh i'll tell you i was really impressed with the the show that the greensboro puts on uh, uh with their band there and the, the cheerleaders they had a great crowd that was very into it um you know sometimes you get a large crowd and they just kind of sit back and sit on their hands uh, these this group was was very involved uh, very supportive a, a classy group but but a real loud uh, environment and uh, we started off uh, with two sets that, that we won and to be honest, we were, we were really lucky because um, we weren't playing very well in the first two sets and, and to, to get away with a couple wins. And then Greensboro really turned it up and uh, kind of took control in the third and fourth set. And I thought that in the final frame in that, that you know, game is 15 where anything can happen, uh, I thought our team did very well. Um, that was the one point that, that, that our execution was up, our passing was up. And we had a couple people who changed some things with our lineup. I had some people that stepped up and, and did a really – good job for us and so it was nice to to pull that win out in the way that we did well you're eight and six now and that you know after starting with the the tough competition mm -hmm. that you started uh probably not pleased with eight and six but you have to be happy that you're eight and six not six and eight <laughs> no, you're you're right and i think you know when we set up our schedule um what we try and do is, is create a, a challenging enough uh schedule that we're going to be tested, um, that we have some matches that we have an opportunity to win, but then a lot of matches that could go either way. Um, and you can see that, you know, really in our in three of our last six wins, uh, those went five, uh, our match with Missouri, Valpo, and then Greensboro. Um, so they were, they were tight and we could have very easily, uh, been, a, had a three match swing in the other direction. Uh, so we want to go, we want to try and, and I think a successful pre-conference schedule is above 500 and we've accomplished that and that's important for us uh, but now our record resets to zero and zero and it's the one that matters you mentioned about some individuals playing better you know tell us a little bit about individually that uh, who stepped up this past week well we had a you know we had an injury um coming off of the the youngstown match uh, ellie robertson uh, injured her knee and uh, so that took her out for the rest of the weekend and, and courtney smith that's been nursing a, a thumb injury uh really stepped up for us actually wound up being named the uh, tournament mvp uh so that was was great to see and it just allowed her to get into a rhythm and and show what she could do and then actually in our, in our fifth set against greensboro we made a little bit of a switch uh, colby cameron stepped in and and uh, ran our offense for us and did just a, a great job there so uh, we've got a very – well, our roster is short in numbers. It's very deep in talent, and it's it's nice to see different people step up in different matches. Yeah, as a coach, that's what you, I guess, look for. I mean, you never know when someone's going to get called upon, and if you can call upon people and they answer your call, you have faith in them going down the home stretch. Yeah, and, you know, like, for example, the, the, the situation that Colby was in, um, you know, she hadn't set all weekend. Um, you know, she'd been playing a defensive role. Uh, we needed to, to switch things up a little bit. Um, and so now we put her in a, a high-stress situation, fifth set, 
championship on the line go in, run our offense, and, and she really answered that call. And uh, the other thing that was good is to see her teammates step up and, you know, execute. You have a great setter. It's kind of like a quarterback. You, you can put that, that ball on the numbers, but if that receiver doesn't catch it or that attacker uh, doesn't execute the kill, um, you know, you're not scoring points. And I thought that was something that across the board our offense did a nice job of. Uh, six, six in a row or five in a row? One, two. Six in a row. Six we'll, six ta- in a row. we'll take all six. Yeah, six <laughs> in a row. What are you most pleased with right now in your game? Um, I, I think we're starting to see the level at which we can we can compete and, and the product that we can put out on the floor. Um, we still don't have the consistency there, and I think that showed in the Greensboro match. Um, we really gave them way too many points, and that, that's something that, that we've, we've been looking at. Um, we go out, and we are earning a lot of points. We're scoring a lot on our execution, um, but we're also providing uh, probably too many free points for, for our opponents, and that's something that we need to, to fix and we need to cut down so that, that consistency has to improve. Um, but definitely we're seeing that um, we've got some capability out there. We, we, we have a, a nice high mark to, to strive for. And, um, you know, but that, that comes day in, day out in practice. And, and I, I think our, our team's ready to take on that challenge. OVC honors, uh, Caitlin Clark, uh, the OVC setter of the week honor. And uh, anytime you can get a league award, it's pretty nice. She must have had a, a pretty good week. She did. She did. She had uh, really two exceptional matches in, in Youngstown and, and Wilmington. Um, and, again, that's um, – the, that type of award is, is is definitely a recognition of what Caitlin did. Um, but anytime you have, uh, whether it be the setter of the week, defensive player of the week, offensive player of the week, um, those are also a reflection on how the team is doing. Uh, you know, Caitlin doesn't have those opportunities if, if our passing's not there and if our attackers aren't executing on the tail end of the contact. Um, she's not getting those recognition and those numbers as well. Get a little time off uh, before Friday rolls around. Mm-hmm. And as we talked about last week, the fact that uh, – it begins for real mm-hmm. coming up on Friday. Weatherby Jim Belmont comes to town with the injuries and the nicks and bangs. Did you give them a little more time off, or are you ready uh, for the same kind um, of schedule that you, you know, would? You know, we we've got to recognize that um, maybe sometimes we can't prepare necessarily in the way that we want to. So. Uh, really, they got in and got after it in the weight room yesterday morning. Um, that was something that, that we, we wanted to make sure that we're continuing to build um, our strength and our endurance. Um, from a practice standpoint, we spent a lot of time watching film. Um, there was a lot of uh, examples over the weekend of some things that we need to fix and need to improve upon. Um, we took a good hard look at, at our statistics, um, both team and individual, and seeing where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are, kind of lay out a bit of a, of a game plan and a, a map of, all right, here's how we need to, to continue to improve, and this is, these are the pieces that are going to allow us to be successful in OVC play. Belmont comes to town, and we talked about them, I guess, the last couple of times you've been on here, the fact that they're entering the league, but they're entering the league with a lot of respect. They are. They were uh, selected to finish second in the league um, by our coaches and in, in sports information. Um, they have a, a strong tradition of, of solid volleyball. They've... Um, have won their league uh, numerous times and when they were in the A-Sun and have, have made multiple trips to the NCAA tournament. Uh, very well coached, well prepared. Uh, the other thing is that they have an assistant um, that had been at Tennessee State. So uh, while they are new to the league, they've got staff members that are very familiar um, with with us, uh, with the other uh, conference schools. And so they'll be. we expect them to be very well prepared this weekend wasn't too far of a trip from Tennessee State to Belmont since they're <laughs> in the same city. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't think their assistant had to had, <laughs> had to, to pack up and move there. Okay. And then of course you mentioned Tennessee State. They come in Saturday, so it's gonna you know, Tennessee State's always it just seems to me been very athletic volleyball wise. Yeah, they are. They they have um they 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 can put a, a product on the court that is I mean, tops in the in the league. Um you know they they're kinda like us in a in a way that I think We've put some pretty good performances out there, and then we've struggled a little bit. And so it's that consistency that, that we're trying to find. Um, and, you know, we expect them to, to be, you know, guns ablaze and ready to go. So we need weather be rocking. Mm-hmm. Friday, and of course, it's 7 o'clock, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. And, of course, want to tell people because uh, we'll be with them before next week. But 
just to put this on your calendar, a trip to Richmond coming up on Wednesday, September 26th, and it seems like it's always a dogfight when Morehead State and EKU plays. Oh, it, you know, and it doesn't matter what sport. You know, I think we saw that a couple weeks ago with, with football, um, and I know that they were – uh, in a position to really pull that one out, and uh, and so and they had a great crowd there. Uh, that was a, a great showing of, of Moorhead fans, and, and we've had that and when we've traveled down there. And again, it doesn't matter football, basketball, volleyball. Um, it can be uh, you know a blood drive uh, that gets everybody's competitive uh, juices flowing when you're when we're playing the Colonels, and that that's going to be a, a big one. Plus, it's our first uh, road conference match, and that's you know in our opinion, that's where you win championships you can lose them at home but you've got to go out on the road and, and win some matches if you're going to be competitive with the last two years and all the success I know you don't want to dwell upon that but you know the the targets on your young lady's back which is a nice thing because you fought three losses in the LVC the last two years yeah well I think anybody that says that they don't like that target on their back it doesn't want to be successful because if you're going to be, um, if you're going to win a couple championships and, and have an opportunity to be at the top of the league, yeah, people are going to be uh, going after you, and and uh, so we welcome that. And um, you know, one of our Annie Grunschlager, uh, she's got a, a saying that she likes is, "Play like you're number one, train like you're number two. and um, you know that's the the approach that we we take. We've we haven't accomplished anything this year. You know, the past is the past. Yes, we've we've done some nice things, but again, right now we're zero and zero in, in league play, uh, as is everybody else. And so we've got to prove ourselves um, every night that we step out on the court, every day that we're in the gym and practice. All you Eagle fans, of course, Friday, September 21st, Belmont comes to town 7 o'clock on the 22nd, which is Saturday, Tennessee State. And, of course, as we said, put the, uh, September 26th, that's next Wednesday on your calendar, travel to Eastern Kentucky University as the Eagles take on Richmond. Good luck. going to be a strong week. Hopefully some uh, great action at Weatherby Gym, and we wish you all the luck, and we'll probably talk to you next week. Well, well thanks, Jason. We really uh, hope that everybody comes out and supports us. We, we've appreciated all the, um, all the fans that, that we've had in the past and, and really look forward to a great weekend. That's this uh, segment with head coach Jamie Gordon. We'll come back with more. This is the Eagles Sports Coaches Show.